It has been said that the electric grid was conceived in the age of Edison, designed in the age of Eisenhower, and installed in the age of Nixon. In the past few decades, computing technology has revolutionized many areas of our lives, making our cars more efficient, our offices more productive, and bringing us closer together than ever before. However, one glaring oversight in this progression has been the very system that brings power to all the devices that make our digital lives possible. Today, we possess the technology to upgrade the power grid, to make it more efficient, more reliable, and perhaps most importantly, to integrate renewable power as a significant part of our energy supply. This technology has been called the smart grid. Like most technological change, adoption of the smart grid will be incremental. I and my colleagues believe that it will occur partly in a series of discrete steps, beginning with small, localized, self-contained smart grid networks called microgrids. You see, in the past, connecting power systems together into large, uh, monolithic grids meant that the united systems were more reliable, uh, they were more efficient, and, and less prone to outages. But today, we have the technology to turn that idea on its head. By using modern control and communication technology and integrating smart grid concepts on the small scale, microgrids can supply power more reliably and with higher quality than current large-scale grids are capable. Because they have their own internal power sources, they can disconnect from the wider network in the event of an outage or, or a disturbance. And furthermore, and this is the really exciting part to me, microgrids can help integrate renewable power by controlling demand and other resources to accommodate the variability of things like wind and solar energy. Now, not only can microgrids change the way that we generate and consume power in wealthy, developed areas, but they could have an unprecedented impact on the economies of struggling, developing nations. For example, in places like sub-Saharan Africa, microgrids could supply reliable power to the industries and services that need it most without the prohibitive cost of upgrading their entire networks to meet first world standards. Now, this isn't a dream. Much of the technology has already been developed and tested in pilot projects and it is awaiting implementation. What is needed now is clear vision from decision makers and regulators as well as support from the public to pursue this idea of microgrids beyond pilot projects. For this, a deep understanding of the true costs and benefits of microgrids are needed. And that is my job. The topic that you were talking about, just recently in the newspaper, I think Germany announced that they were actually um, removing some of the incentive programs that they had for uh, solar power. I know Ontario, um, the take-up has been a little bit too successful for the financial programs that they had backing mm -hmm. it. This transition to moving to smart grids, smaller grids, and those types of things is a direction we need to go. How many of the barriers, or what are the barriers in comparison to the technology that you're talking about, the social economic side of the question? Mm -hmm. uh, certainly. Well, um, I, I guess if there's, if there's one single barrier to uh, kind of integration of, of renewable power, it's the cost. And if I, if I can kind of qualify that by saying it's not that renewable power is expensive, it's that non-renewable power, fossil fuel power, is incredibly cheap. It's too cheap. It doesn't take into account the full cost of the energy. It doesn't take into account the environmental effects, in some cases the social effects, you know, where are we getting it from, uh, that sort of thing. So, so one is definitely the, the cost. Um, the second, and this applies more directly to, uh, to microgrids than to renewable power, say, is that a lot of the benefits that these things provide aren't really well valued by markets today. So, for example, they could provide um, things like uh, improved power quality, improved reliability, uh, and, and um, <clears throat> Just, just depending on the jurisdiction, there's not a good framework in place to be able to actually provide an economic incentive to, to build those microgrids. So, um, you know, as, as I kind of mentioned, I, I think that the biggest struggle 
is going to be convincing kind of the regulators and the people who, who are sort of in charge of these, of these markets and the big utilities to say there is a value for these things and we need to implement uh, a, way of, uh, a way of incentivizing this, uh, this sort of uh, thing.